Welcome to URI Just Getting Started, episode 36. Gosh, episode 36 already. This has gone really fast. I'm here with roadie star, Will Daniels. How are you, Will? I'm good, Scott. Well, it's really hard for me to describe you because you do so many different things. You're a multi-dimensional player. And besides that, you were Atlantic 10 first team, not once, but twice. Rhode Island is one of those programs where, um, you know, they they kind of bring you in to do a little damage sophomore and junior year. Whereas the bigger programs are like, OK, you know, get in where you fit in, yeah. you know, maybe start junior year, maybe you start senior year. But Rhodey's always one of those programs that gives opportunities to guys, you know, in their sophomore year. You know, freshman year, you get shoulder ropes and you see how it's done. And in sophomore year, it's like, all right, listen. You're expected to contribute in some type of way. I mean, I remember going in, you know, before I committed to Rhodey, um, Coach Barron, Coach Desmond Oliver, those guys are like, look, freshman year, they, they kind of laid it out for me. Freshman year, you're going to, you know, come off the bench. They're going to, you know, Dewan Robinson, Jamal Wise, Terrence Mack, Scott Hazleton. These guys are going to show you how it's done. So that freshman year, you have the, you're put in a position to actually start and, 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 you know, show what you can do. <laughs> I had a nickname. They, you know, they, they, <laughs> the funny thing was I had the whole entire team calling me Chili. Chili. Never went Chili. And uh, so I remember, I remember, quick story. One time I remembered, you know, the, the nickname caught on and, um, it went from the locker room onto the Ryan Center. We had practice. And I think Coach Barron overheard somebody call me Chili. Obviously, the, up until that point, uh, Coach had called me Will, obviously. And, it, and then he called, heard somebody call me Chili. He heard another player say it. He heard another player say it. He heard another player say it. And he asked somebody, he said, why, why are you guys calling him Chili? He said, man, he's, he's worked so hard to the point that it looks like Sometimes he's out there chilling, going through the motion because he knows what's going to happen through experience, through hard work. He 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 he's read reading the game so well, even though he's playing hard offense, tough defense. It looks like he's out there chilling sometimes. I think you would have been better called chilling. <laughs> so they'll call me Chili Willie, or just Chili yeah. for short. Okay. And he said, you know, I don't like that nickname. Don't call him Chili. Call him Willie. Work hard. <laughs> oh wow! We because could do better he, than that. What I would call you it, now that I've done research on you is full package or nice package. Thank you. And, uh, is it too late to give you that? I don't no, know. it's not. <laughs> okay. It's still well, let's go over to the uh, slideshow. So you were a Poughkeepsie guy. The beautiful place, not known for basketball, but what was not it? At all. Growing up in Poughkeepsie, it sounded like it was pretty peaceful. Um, it was. It's a little rough. It, Poughkeepsie, oh, okay. Poughkeepsie's a little rough. Where I went to high school in High Park in the suburbs, it was a little nice. It was um the birthplace and home of F, uh the for our former president FDR. Okay. And um, but Poughkeepsie itself is definitely a small city, rough city. Um, okay. And I was a big fish in a little pond. And, you know, you're talking about the Kipsy. You're talking about um, not many people making it out for basketball, a lot of, a lot of crime, a lot of violence. And, um, you know, we, we're always – us upstate guys are always, um, you know, second fiddle to New York City guys when it comes to basketball. And uh, even maybe even third fiddle, you know, when we talk about New York City and then you're talking about Long Island players and then the upstate guys come. And um, so it was always um, tough for me to get the recognition. And I felt like I needed to work that, you know, that much more. Um, and um, what solidified me was playing AAU and playing for a prestigious club in the Albany City Rocks. And um, okay. which is um coincidental I, I had to go even more upstate <laughs> to get 
uh, you know, uh, uh, some recognition. But, you know, it was the uh, Albany City Rocks was the Nike sponsored AAU team that traveled all over the states to um, these different uh, Nike sponsored tournaments um, that were ranked very high. And from your production, that's how you would get ranked. And that's how, you you know, the colleges would see you and, and you would get offers and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, growing out of coming up and growing up out of Poughkeepsie, it, it was tough. And um, my parents knew that. And that's why they sent me to a school in the suburbs in High Park. So overseas, um, once it's over, any future plans? You've stayed there for a while. You've done really well. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's all about progressing and obviously the offers um you know i've i would say the first 10 12 years was a lot of progression and then the offers um never stopped and so it was more about you know just saving as much as i can before i leave i thought about retiring during the pandemic and I probably have a good, solid two more years left. Um, I would love to do something in finances or coaching, whichever whichever one has the most opportunities. I heard, uh, coincidentally, you played against Jimmy Barron overseas in one game. One game we did. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Back when Jimmy, I think Jimmy was in Turkey. Uh-huh. We played. We played against each other, and um, that was a phenomenal experience. It must have been. Yeah, that was my guy, man. You know that. That I mean, we were the one-two punch for so long. I mean, you're talking about beating Syracuse at Syracuse. I saw that. Just being we'll get to that. yeah, part apart or playing beside one of the best shooters, not only in roadie history, but you know the Rhode Island State history. And Jimmy Barron, man, he's a he's a he's a living legend. Well, let's squelch those rumors by the fans that there was a frosty relationship between you and Barron, because uh, I didn't believe it, and I'm glad I brought that up purposely because I didn't think that was the case. And I think you're both great guys, so uh, so we're, let's put no. that one to bed. And uh, I think that might be lingering, and whatever's lingering. That's gone. No, yeah. no, there was nothing between me and Jimmy. I, you know, for, Jimmy was a legend before he came to Rhodey, right, in the state of Rhode Island. So for me, I was just always the big brother trying to show guys the ropes, things like that. But it was in his territory. You know what I mean? So Rhode Island was always his territory. So it was just. Um, it was almost like a, 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 a like sibling rivalry kind of thing where it's like, OK, even though you're the big brother, you know, I'm good and this is my territory. So but, but we definitely found a, 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 a you know a middle ground and a way to coexist and to do great things and to win some big games. Here's a couple from the fans favorite country country you played and least favorite without starting an international crisis. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> my well my two favorite places to play in was paris and puerto rico wow my, and how so my lead, um paris was very um welcoming um very romantic i mean you know the the, the mm -hmm. you know everybody wants to go to paris you know, see see the you know, the the history that the city has to offer. Um, you know, Paris is like a old fashioned New York City. Um, yeah. A lot of history, a lot, lot of tradition, a um, lot of culture, a lot of sights to see, and um, a great place to play. You know, in, 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 um, like I said, New York City vibes in Europe, which is very hard to find. Yeah, um, so. Paris and then Puerto Rico, um, obviously because it's a vacation destination. Yeah, obviously it's a, an 
in American territory. So you don't need a passport to travel there. Uh, a lot of English spoken on the island. And, you know, uh, also country with a lot of culture. And Puerto Rico ultimately ultimately is like little Florida. You know, it's like a little, little Florida Miami. city. Yeah, almost like Miami. A lot of Miami yeah. uh, vibes. And, and, and so those are my two uh, favorite places to play, Paris and Puerto Rico. Some of the other great things you did in your roadie career – um, we went through your senior year. I like your 18 and ones going into your senior year. You had nice. a uh, great interview with Steve McDonald. I was going to ask my guy. Yeah. And he, uh, he, he talked about the 18 and ones and you were going into your senior year and he said you bulked up and you were, your preseason first team. And, uh, he thought it was going to be really beneficial and i guess he was correct because uh, another thing that player fans think of you as a guy that finishes and you are hit pretty hard and a lot of times when people are hit hard they're not able to finish they, they just get two shots but you not only were fouled but you got the the, the basket and you made the foul shot so you were a closer and uh, there's not too many of those out there that get that many and, and, and make the foul shots like you did. Big credit to those guys in the weight room, the training staff, the trainers. I mean, that, that was just as big as um, uh, pra uh, 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 put a training outside of practice, outside of the games, was hitting the weights, and mm -hmm. they always had a really ready for the next battle and you know when you're talking about um roadie which is arguably a mid-major and we're playing against these big schools like a syracuse like a kansas and those teams you know you have to be strong you have to be able to take hits and finish and and, and you have to be able to defend those guys and like i said that the the, the staff in the, in the training centers the weight room they always had the basketball team ready and and, and um strong for the next challenge you, you rise to the occasion that's another thing big games you make big plays you scored 29 points against gw i was reading the uh, write-up after you beat xavier which is just a phenomenal thing to do it we rhode island xavier had rhode island's number no matter what we did and to get a win from xavier was not didn't happen and you guys made it happen in the semifinals i I read the article. Everyone was saying Rhode Island is NCAA bound. And you had a tough loss to GW. And those talks uh, went away. And I don't even think you made it to the NIT over there. So it, you were close. But you, but because of that, I guess that last loss, that, didn't, that wasn't enough, even though you had such a great win against Xavier in the... Uh, the Atlantic 10 semifinals. Yeah, definitely. Xavier always had our number. They had, uh, they had, uh, you know, strong, skilled, high IQ guys, man. Oh, they would, they would hand it to us, man. They were good. And, and they talk about rising to the occasion. They always rose to the occasion and they were consistent with it. Yeah. And, uh, they hear those guys now because, you know, you, you play against those guys overseas and you just remember that team and, and they were forced to be reckoned with. And uh, that want, that win against them, I mean, I, you couldn't tell me that we weren't headed to the NCAA tournament when we won that game and it fell short with the GW loss. I was looking at player of the year because you won first team your junior mm -hmm. your year and I was just like, okay, so why not? be considered for player of the year. And there were two guys from UMass that won the same year as player of the year. Do you remember them? Stefan Lasme and Gary Forbes. What do they mean to you? I mean, I don't remember them. I, you know, it's sad that I, that's on me for not remembering them. I should know all the players of the year from Atlantic 10, but don't you think uh, your name should have been in the conversation or, of course. And I, I, I honestly think it was in the conversation, maybe a very small amount. 
But those guys were beasts, man. I mean, you're talking about okay. – there's a reason why Lazmi was drafted. I mean, he's probably the best defender or one of the best defenders the A-10 has ever seen. Mm-hmm. You know, he was – you know, with the with the rebounds, the blocking shots. Uh, he would just shut his opponent down at that position, at that five position. And um, we're t- when you're talking about Gary Forbes, you're talking about – um, you know, one of the, you know, those New York City guys that were, were elite coming up and, and, and had a chance to go anywhere, and, you know, had the uh, recognition, notoriety, had the offers and chose to go to UMass, um, you know, to be the this, this, this star offensively and, you know, really, really um, made his mark. <laughs> Our last guest was uh, JV. JV said he knew you. Uh, he's the the guy who got all the fans riled up. I think you guys went to school the same time. You know, Definitely. What, I remember. Yep, I remember yeah. him. You know, his wife, you know, he, no one's as big a fan as JV of Rhode Island. His wife went to UMass. Oh, wow. And they're still together. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> really a rival they're always a good team and a force to be yeah. reckoned with i feel like roadie and pc is something different they <laughs> turned to rhode island since um two or three times actually I, i've the last time i returned i met hurley wow and i think that was his last he was going into his last season there and i met him he's you know he he um he said he was a fan of me he said he uh, 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 you know, really like what I did for the program, and um, you know, not not just basketball wise, academic wise, and you know how I was always kept my nose clean, and it was great meeting him. You know, and obviously I wish he would have stayed there longer to help the program, but you yeah, know he got a, a a wonderful offer that he couldn't turn down. So I understand. Well, I hear you just have the most incredible parents, and a lot of the fans had the pleasure of sitting next to them during your games. And they, they just talked about how how great it was. to. They must have been phenomenal people, not only to go to your, every one of your games or as many games as they could, but um, the type of personalities they had were, were people just left it, being so happy that they spent the game sitting next to them. Yeah, for me growing up, I had a balance with my parents. And I say a balance in a sense that my father – only thought about basketball you know I, I i don't think i heard anything academically come out of my father's <laughs> mouth and yeah. then my mother was only worried about the academic part and none of the basketball <laughs> so wow. my mother was like look pick a school where you're gonna excel academically you're gonna have a degree you're gonna be able to fall back on when the ball stops bouncing and then my father was like look pick a school where you're gonna play you're gonna show that all you could do, you're going to show you the full package. Somebody's going to be honored to have you, yada, yada, yada. So yeah. to have you at the games, interacting with the fans, watching me play, and it was it was the best of both worlds. And, you know, I appreciate all they've done uh, for me up until this point. And, um, you know, they're still in my ear about the same thing. My father's in my ear, you know, what are you scoring over there? You know, who'd you dunk yeah. on? Who, Oh, who'd you win against? And my mother's like, look, what do you think you want to do when the ball stops bouncing? And, you know, I'm like, oh, maybe finances, coaches, coaching, whatever opportunity I get, I would love to get back in some 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 way. And so uh, when I would finish the games, uh, shower up and come back onto the court to greet them, they were always talking to Steve or, you know, rest in peace, Don. They were always talking to the 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 um the fans the mm-hmm. uh, faculty they you know they stay talking how's he doing does he treat you guys with respect wow you know does he guys what type of person is he becoming so you know I, I it, it was it was fun to see it was it was great to hear and you know ultimately um what Rhode Island did for me was it helped raise me. And it helped um, turn me into the the man, the person I am today, and and not just the institution, but the people. You know, I think Rhode Island is is, is about the people, 
you know, the fans, the the the, the staff, the the um coaches. Because, you know, once you get into road, you're on your own and you know, you're you're in all aspects an adult and you're mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. And so I, I think that um to have an upbringing like I do is important, you know, just parents to stay on you, um, um, you know, to be tough, but, you know, tough with love mm-hmm. and to um, value your growth and check on your growth through other people. And, you know, that was important. It sounds like it's difficult, too. Possibly because you're being pulled in two different directions from your mom and your dad. So it's great uh, because uh, they're both involved in your life. And I don't know which side I would have been. I might have been on your dad's side. (laughs) Just me, but... um, (laughs) On the middle. On the middle. (laughs) Yeah, I know. But overall, the the impression was just uh, phenomenal from everyone was talking about uh, your parents, your parents, and everything like that, and your sister too. Yes, so we're she looking was supportive. at. Yeah, and she played basketball also, and I heard you let her win every time. Every time I let her win, you know, she she we we didn't always have the greatest relationship coming mm-hmm. up, so I had her win when we finally did get to the point where you know we had a great relationship. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of records. You're in the thousand point yeah. number twelve, <laughs> right behind Kenny Green. <laughs> you That's know, I did an internship. I did an internship with Mike Lepray. Of and course, I had to punch it, uh, 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 type in the um, records. I had to transfer the records from basically uh, paper to the computer. And that's when I found out how many records I held when I was typing my own name in the computer for the records. <laughs> so you had a lot of uh, records and I went each season. Obviously, this couldn't have been a fun season. You've, you had a lot of good players. You had uh, Scott Hazelton, your freshman year in Parfait, Bate, uh, Jamal Wise and Dewan. You had some wins. Uh, any year you beat Providence, it's a good season, even with six and 22. <laughs> And you took <laughs> right. I know it was hard. I I, I don't want to estimate six and twenty two is just uh, very rough for everyone. But you, at least you beat Providence. In my four years, it was it was whoever had home court advantage got the win because the fans played such a, a tremendous uh, a, a part in the game that it was like they were the sixth man. And so the fans always propelled you um, to get that victory, regardless of how close the game was. Yeah, this was a tough year. Um, we we honestly, we were trying to build chemistry and have guys to depend on all season, and it just didn't work out. We, uh, 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 um, Scott was very consistent, but as you can see, no, under him, nobody was really consistent. Um, was, including, uh, he improved every year too. The senior yes, year, really struck gold. But. We we were me, Parfait, uh, and Luck, John Lucky. We were freshmen coming in. You know, we were we you know p- paying our dues, getting showed the ropes. But that was definitely a tough year. Um, you know, we had to learn from the older guys, Dewan, Jamal, Scott. Now Scott, Scott played a big part in my success too because. Him being a UConn transfer, yeah, um, I didn't expect him there. I think they had told me about him. Well, actually, no, he was in the game. He was in the season before, but I think there was some injuries going around. They didn't know if he was going to play a lot that upcoming year when I was a freshman. So when he actually was playing and we were going against each other in practice, oh, it was some of the best battles ever. I mean – he really showed me the ropes. He would get the best of me some days. Some days I would get the best of him. And, I, you know, so I'm learning my freshman year in college from not only a UConn transfer, but 
form, former McDonald's All American. Yeah. Former basketball out of Massachusetts. Oh, he was a phenomenal player, man. I learned so much from him. And it was a guy like that where I'm like, you know what? I'm a, this is what's to come for me. Maybe I can get to his level eventually and do the things he did. This is something that I wanted to ask you about. Um, the, the swoon or the losses at the end of the season, the late losses, what, and it happened a few years. What do you think that attributed to? And I have some theories. Maybe, maybe you were more offensive minded and, the teams that do well at the end of the season or the more defensive minded. I, I can't figure it out because um, your seasons were just, it just looked like a sure thing for you to make it postseason. And in this mm -hmm. season, you had that seven and nine to end the season. You have any, uh, without being critical of, of coaches or yeah. anything, just your, your feeling. Delray couldn't figure it out. Uh, he looked at me frustrated when I asked him that question. He didn't have an answer, <laughs> but um, uh, just wondering if you could weigh in on that and understand it. It's basketball is very hard to understand when it comes to these. Yeah, yeah. even it's funny, Scott, because even to this day, a team at the end of the season, you know, any uh, coach or, or, or guy that understands college basketball will tell you, like, look, the biggest the biggest challenge is to get your team to uh, 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 improve mm -hmm. and, you know, and, 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 and be up for the games even at the end of the season. So yeah. when I see something like this, a seven and nine, I'm automatically, I go straight to fatigue. Yeah. Right. You're practicing individually. You're practicing with the team. You know, individually, you might go an hour. I know Coach Barron had us go an hour and a half, two hours sometime. So at the end of the season, your body begins to break down. You probably need more breaks. Uh, but you're not going to get them because, you know, when you think about late in the season, you're talking about um, in-conference play. So, yeah. uh, you know, those are crucial, critical games. and. Um, you know, you, you can attribute it to fatigue. You can uh, attribute it to, you know, just playing against top teams in the A-10. Um, so there's a couple of vari variables there. Um, but, um, yeah, that's 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 a tough record to look at even to this day, 7-9 at the end of the season. Well, that's an interesting point. And then the second point could be, Maybe you, did, you had great players, but maybe not enough of them, and you didn't have as much of a, a bench that you needed. A combination of those two things. Maybe that's the answer. And it gets better. You're 19 and 14. Look at the list of wins more. Like Utah is a, a great win. And I like this freshman combo. I, the, this was a great recruit and grab. Two guys from New Haven. Keith. Yep. And Lamont, and they contributed their freshman year. They already were doing great things their freshman year. So uh, that athletic, very coachable, um, you know, just raw, very raw, just, you know, guys that excelled that at the playground, you know, playing playground basketball. And then with a little fine tuning, you know, and hard work and, and, you know, throwing that work ethic. The wins, you know, Providence is always great. Syracuse, Richmond, Dayton, you guys were ranked 21st in the nation. I love to see that. I and remember that, that. Once again, you see that six out of eight games at the end of the season. They yeah. call it late season. Your whole uh, preseason before you start was the year of unfinished business. This year with Archie Miller, attitude is everything. Um, you had the great three seniors. So, I mean, you had all the makings of of an NCAA team. You caught fire at one point at, at 15 and 2. I, I have seen teams that have started off so hot, and then it's almost like you would prefer them to be a little more level 
and and then yeah. do your best because sometimes you know you start high, maybe you start to think a little higher of yourself, and then um, tough things happen. But uh, this one was hard because uh, you really had everything it took, and I don't know how many games you would have had to win by the end if it was maybe it instead of six that you lost maybe four that might have done it but you were so close and and then of course the big grading game that you it was a heartbreaking loss with the three pointer near the end there's nothing you could do about those games you know someone's going to hit a three pointer it may be on your team it may be on the other team and those things happen yeah i think i think you know we when we were ranked 21st our head was in the sky I mean, you couldn't tell us anything, man. <laughs> and then late season, um, and also, you know, with late season meltdowns, it can be it can be attributed to, um, you know, being, being when, when you're 21st in the country, you're not a secret anymore. Yeah. So you're gonna be scouted. You know, they're gonna have put their best defenders on your best offensive players. So you got you might have to do something different. You can't you can't do the same thing. Um, but ultimately, you're not a secret. Guys know we had a good team, and you know they're going to play their toughest. They're going to you know put their best defender on the best offense and offensive guy, and they're going to give you everything you they got. And uh, I remember that Creighton loss. It, it was tough. I mean, I was. That was my senior year, and, and it was the last game of my coll collegiate career. And I just remember being up, like, give or take 20 at halftime. Wow. I didn't know that. And Yeah, and then losing that game, it was – oh, man, I cried at the end of that game. I cried not only because my, my career was over, but because that was a game that we could have won. We definitely should have won. We have some uh, questions from the roadie fans. And one of them involves the, the Creighton game. And the general opinion from a lot of the fans was that your minutes per game was too low. And mm -hmm. you sat out in the second half with three fouls. So some people obviously point uh, the blame on the coach. And, and I'm certainly not asking you to point blame on anyone, but what was your yeah. take on that game? Do you feel like you should have been in the – obviously everyone thinks they should be in the game at the end of uh, of a game or in the middle of the second half. What, what was your take on that? Well, like you said, in college, I was always that guy who rose to the occasion. So with Creighton being a team um, that's well-known, full of shooters, uh, and we're at their place, yeah, it was in – um had to be right Omaha. Yeah. It was in Omaha. Yeah. And uh so I just rose to the occasion and I got off to a good start. And uh, you know, I we we're up 20. So I, you know, of course the fans are gonna be like, you know, put Will in, he's doing a good job. They're up 20 at half. But part of the game is, you know, controlling the minutes. And if you're in foul trouble, if you have three fouls, it's kind of tough to um begin the half or to play heavy minutes in the beginning of the second half. Yeah. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe coach felt like, all right, well, you know, we're going to give him more of a chance as the time goes down. But like I said, being up 20 and then seeing that lead, you know, dwindle is, is also tough from the bench. Like knowing that um, you can, you can, uh, you know, help with that and keep securing that lead. But um yeah, I, I mean that that was 14 years ago <laughs> that game. So the you know, and the best way I could put it is foul trouble, and you know they're at home. So you know basketball is a game of runs, and you gotta think. Obviously, they're they're gonna make a run, and you just gotta keep playing tough. You gotta you know sustain the lead. Uh, so who do you keep in touch with on the team? Yeah, I, for a long time, I was keeping it, you know, John Lucky was still one of my close friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we grew our distance. You know, he has his family. I have my family. So it's tough to keep in touch with guys. Um, through Instagram, through social media, me and Jimmy still talk. And me and Delroy still talk. 
Wow. Well, thank so, you so much for coming in today. A lot of people have such fond memories of you and they want to see where you're at and um, they're going to be happy to bring back the memories and just to, to hear how you are, your beliefs, and you just are all around, not just an all around player, but you're all around person. You, you have great um, understanding of life and the values that I've noticed. So I could see why you, your banner citizen, uh, Rhode Island believes that and understood that. So, so once again, thanks so much for your time. Grab, uh, 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 you know, salute to you, salute to, you know, all the guys out there that are um, involved in the roadie program, roadie alumni who have podcasts who are really trying to, um, you know, give back to the organization and things like that. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you having me on, um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I think, I think the roadie uh, fans and, um, you know, alumni for keeping in touch with me, um, always asking and wondering how I'm doing, and, you know, regardless of where I'm at. Um, and, you know, I want to be back, you know, in Kingston more often. And uh, I think once I retire, I'm definitely going to be at the game supporting more. And But, you know, obviously I'm still, you know, still hooping to this day. So I can't be there as much as I want to be. But just know I'm following, uh, you know, following you. I'm following the team. I'm following, you know, all all the organizations and I'm wishing them luck and, um, you know, all the best. And, uh, you know, thank you and go roadie. <laughs> oh, right. You got my words there. I'm going to do my best to put you in touch with some of your the guys that you hung out with. Definitely Dewan and uh, yes. touch with him and Tyson as well. You know, those two alone but and, and just others. So it won't take long once you get back. You'll be swarmed. You'll probably no, have, no. Have, no. have a schedule no, book and say, OK, I can fit you in for 20 minutes. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no. Excited to get back there. Definitely, you know, it's going to be good to see the old guys. It's going to be good to see you. You know, yes. I appreciate, again, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate you doing your research, your homework on me. And, and you know, I know that was a long time ago. So I know the research. A lot to the, do. The, the, well, you made me do a lot of work. Yeah. Did you, did you have to do so much? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you I appreciate it. You haven't seen me for like four days. I've been in a cave. But you know what? That's why I do this. I love this stuff. And uh, thank you. And, and I know that people do, too. And they they eat it up and they'll go and they'll say, well, Will said at the twenty two hundred mark, his relationship with um, Jim Barron or what they, they go. They watch this thing and analyze it. So stay tuned. Subscribe. Get your family to subscribe. And Definitely. you'll know it, my next guest is going to be uh, a top player from Lewis Hutchinson, who's going to be a great player. And uh, he's already had some phenomenal games as a freshman. So uh, right. and, and we'll have some more. We're, we're just always going to have great guests, including people like yourself, uh, former players, right. legends. You know, legends are a big part of what I'm trying to do. And also, when it comes to Rhode Island basketball, it's always go roadie. Go roadie, baby. Go roadie. There you go. I like that baby. <laughs> <laughs> that that made it all right there. Okay, <laughs> we'll keep it going, and I'll, I'm rooting for you. I'd like to get some stats from Uruguay. And there you go. Uh, we'll be following you, and wherever you go on from there. So keep it up, and we'll see. Thank you, you. Yes. Kingston, when your time comes. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right.